So let's say I have a fruit stand in the market where I sell fruit. I have here on column A the fruits that I sell. On column B I have the price that I paid for this fruit. And on column C I have the tax that I paid. So I want to know what is my total cost or the total price that I paid for each of the fruit categories. So what I'm going to do is a simple sum. I'm going to start with equals, as always, to start a formula or a function. Then I'm going to do B2, so I'm going to click on B2, plus C2, which is the tax. I click on enter or return, and that's the total price that I paid for apples, which is the price plus tax. Now I want to repeat the same operation all the way down to mangoes. I could go ahead doing this manually. But the easiest way to do that is simply to copy the same formula. And what I can do, we saw this in a different tutorial, I can bring my cursor here until I see the cross, drag it down. I can simply double click, it will drag down. Or I can use the uh, keyboard shortcut, in which case I'm going to have to select all the cells and I'm going to have to do Ctrl D. So here I did Ctrl D. Oh, let's undo and let's use the double click option. So I bring my cursor here, bottom right, double click, and I copy the formulas. Now you see that the calculations are correct, 600 plus 45, 645. Let's check one randomly here, 400 plus 30 is 430. And if I double click to open the formula, I see that this is B8 plus C8. The reason why this works is called relative reference. What it means is that the spreadsheet is aware of the relative position of each cell and it automatically updates the cell references accordingly. And this is the default option in spreadsheets. It's going to be the same in Excel. The formulas are updated dynamically. Now let's say I don't like the way I add the tax here because you see, I'm using a tax rate of 7.5%, but this tax rate can change. And then I'm going to have to come here and update all of the numbers. So an easier way of doing that, let's select two rows. I'm going to right click and I'm going to insert two rows above. Okay, so here what I can do, I can add tax rate. And I can write 7.5%. 7 okay, and what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna change my formula. I'm gonna do, let's delete everything. So I'm just going to select all of the rows and press delete. So what I can do here is equals the price times the tax rate. Okay, and that will work for cell C4, no problem. Now if I try again to drag this down and copy the formula, it doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because of relative reference. So what Excel is doing is going down one row each time. And that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to always refer to the tax rate that is in cell B1. So what we can do here, let's delete everything but the first calculation because this is correct. So what I can do here is what we call an absolute cell reference. And the way to do that is by using dollar signs. So I want cell B1 to remain unchanged. I want the multiplication to be always by B1. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a dollar sign before B and a dollar sign before B1. And what it does, it locks B1. So whenever I'm copying this formula, B1 remains unchanged. Let me show you again. So you see now the formula is B4 times B1 with dollar signs before the B and before the 1. Okay, let's double click to copy. And you see that now the formula is correct. 
So if we open the formula, we see that every time it has multiplied by B1. Again, B1. There's other ways. Let's delete and do this again. Instead of adding the dollar sign manually, so let's remove it. What we can do, we put our cursor on the number anywhere. And we do F4. If you're using a Mac, is you, you press Fn before and then F4. And this will add the dollar signs or lock the number. If you press again, it moves the dollar sign just in front of the row number. And if you do this again, just in front of the column letter. And if you do this one more time, you remove it. So again, F4 once, you lock column and row. Twice, you lock only the row. Three times, you lock only the column. Four times, you remove it. So I want to bring it back, so I'm going to do it for once more. Click return to leave it. And now I'm ready to copy.